Hello everyone! Welcome back to Spiritual Essence. And in this video, I am going to show you how to make your own prayer beads and how to properly utilize them in a spiritual manner. Now, what are prayer beads? Prayer beads are... They can be made out of anything, really. They can be made out of little plastic beads. They can be made out of things you find in nature, like maybe some stones that, you know, you've drilled holes in. Acorns that have holes drilled in them that have, like, a piece of rope through them. Uh, they can be made out of wood uh, or crystals. Some people have... I have uh, a big, long bunch of them. I think they're made out of malachite. And... Uh, they can be made out of pretty much anything, as long as they're beads attached to some sort of string or rope or, you know, whatever. And they're meant for not only establishing communication between you and a divine power, uh, they can also be used to channel and conduct powerful spiritual energy from these divine powers. Um, similar to the uh, rosary beads in, I believe, they're Catholic. Um, they use that to call upon the power of God. And uh, whenever they feel threatened by a spiritual energy or they don't feel comfortable, they hold it in their hands and they pray to their particular divinity and uh, for protection and guidance. That's essentially what they have a use for. I have made my own. Uh, attached to one particular divinity, but before I show you that, I'm going to show you the prototypes that I made for a couple other ones. I only intended to use, like, one. The rest I intended to, like, sell once I got pendants attached to them. So, basically, yeah, these are basically, um, there's thread. I bought a bunch of thread. I just measured it out, you know, not that long. And I, I put the beads on uh, with the color that was associated with the god. And I tied the ends off. And I made a little extra room at the end so that I could t uh, um, tie a particular amulet. Um, a little pendant. Something to represent the deity, whether it be the animal they're associated with, whether it be uh, maybe a little amulet of a, a, a flower, a stone, you know, something that is related to that god. So this one is the of the god Poseidon, the god of the sea in ancient Greece. Um, I was trying to find a little horse uh, pendant because his animal is the horse. I was going to tie that to the end and sell it. This was to the Greek god of war, Ares. Uh, now, he is a dark god. He is associated with everything bad with war. He is associated with the death and carnage and chaos and all the negative emotions that come along with war. He is not who I would consider a good figure to pray to, but some people might. Like the Spartans often prayed to him and the Athenians would be Athena who is the, uh, she is a goddess of winning war, of success, of strategy. And she's, I definitely view her as the smarter goddess to her sibling, Ares. So I pray to her instead, but I was going to sell this. And then this one, I was actually going to try to pray to. This is of the goddess Yamea, who is uh, an African goddess. Uh, she's a mermaid goddess. And I found a, a profound interest in, in her and I was going to try to contact her so I she is a goddess of the sea so I thought white um then uh light blue for the sea you know something like that so you know those were just a couple of the prototypes but as you can see none of them have amulets attached to them now the one I made that I always use is this Now, um, this is for the goddess Danu. And if you don't know who she is, Danu is a Celtic goddess. She is meant to be associated with the earth and the rivers that exist upon it. She doesn't have any legends really attached to her. not No surviving ones, at least. 
Um, there's only a few references to her in stories of Celtic mythology, but I do sense that she is a goddess of Earth. Um, she may be uh, a certain uh, primordial goddess. Uh, she's very, very old. Um, <clears throat> no offense to her, but she, uh, much like um, Anu in Sumerian uh, mythology, he was the personification of the constellations and the heavens, but after a certain amount of time had passed, he was no longer prey to. He was merely just a personification. Uh, she, this may have been what happened to her well, uh, as well. She may have been prayed to for a certain time period up until a certain point, And then eventually she was just, uh, briefly mentioned in certain legends. So that could be why there are no existing legends of her, but we have a connection. I, I feel like I've prayed to her before in a past life or maybe multiple past lives. We have a strong connection. When I uh, heard about her and I saw the statue, um, I, I felt like a connection, like I had to contact her. And she is just one of the many mother goddesses that have called to me. Another one is the goddess Isis. She is the mother goddess of ancient Egypt. Then there's Hera, the mother goddess and the queen of all the Olympians in ancient Greece. All of those have called to me. And these are mother goddesses. Mother goddesses... They're, they're very interesting, like Gia in ancient Greece. She's the ancient uh, primordial goddess of Earth. Now, um, they have the power to give birth without having sexual relations with uh, an another god partner. They have the power to create on their own. That's what makes them so special. They have a lot more power than regular gods or goddesses have. Uh, Danu is one of these deities. She has a lot more power than the rest in her pantheon. And that power, it, I feel it whenever I contact her. You know, I feel it in my heart and soul. And it's a grand power. It feels invigorating. And she has been with me for a long time and I'm very grateful to her. So I'm like, you know what? I have to make prayer beads <clears throat> to her. And basically, yeah, piece of thread. I decided to use the green beads for, you know, because she's a goddess of Earth, and the light blue because she is a goddess of the lakes and rivers within Earth. You know, she is the. She's supposed to be the goddess of the ever flowing river of life. So she's a goddess of Earth and life. You know, it's kind of a symbolism. <clears throat> and then I got this pendant at Spencer's. It was actually pretty expensive, like 16 bucks. But I took it off, its, uh, off of its old chain because it couldn't fit around my neck. It was like very... But uh, I decided to wrap it, tie it, onto the um, end of the prayer beads. And this is what it came up with. I thought it was perfect. It's got like fake opal behind it and um, the tree of life, which I thought was perfect for her. Similar to in Norse mythology, the tree of life, Yggdrasil, which contains, you know, goes through all of the nine worlds. So this I thought was perfect. So basically I use this, you know, whether I am out in public, you know, I, I carry it in my pockets to keep her protection with me. I also use it when I have a, a doing a ritual to her and she, I have her bless it with her energy, and I also fill it with my own. So it's kind of like a balance between our, our two energies, her de, uh, godly energy and my mortal energy. So <clears throat> I take it, wrap it in my hands like this, or, you know, just like this, and I begin to pray to her. So this is, I'm going to show you guys an example of basically how it works. Goddess Danu, I want to thank you for the blessings that you've bestowed upon me in my life and for watching out for me and those I love. Um, thank you very much. My appreciation is endless. Uh, may you continue to watch over me and bless me with your divine power. Uh, 
please embrace me with your motherly power and protect me from all of the obstacles and pitfalls that may try to break me in this life. Um, and please uh, bestow divine blessings of prosperity and fertility in my life and help me grow and prosper as a human being. And may your energy be with me always. Thank you once again, Goddess Danu. So mote it be. Now that is basically how I, I do it. And as you do this, the energy that you are giving off in this prayer and the energy that she may be sending back is becoming absorbed into this uh, these prayer beads. Now, I know I've said it before that natural is better. So if you can make prayer beads out of natural things like uh, stones or acorns or uh, crystals or things you find in nature, that is wonderful. But just because these are plastic beads does not mean that they don't absorb spiritual energy. Everything absorbs spiritual energy like uh, these curtains, um, this a screen door, the table right behind it, uh, this piece of wood, the clothes I'm wearing right now, and uh, we don't know it, but they're absorbing the energy from we what we give off in the environment. And um, if someone ends up getting a hold of one of these and doesn't cleanse them properly, they might, you know, have projections of the emotions we were giving off at the time when we had them. So that's why it's always good to cleanse items that you get that you don't know the previous owners. And uh, <clears throat> these have been with me for a long time. I've had these for a few years now. Um, I always keep them whether or not I, keep, I hold them in my hand when I'm praying with them and then when I'm not. Uh, usually I will put them either in my coat pocket or my pants pocket and that way the energy stays with me and it's like almost like if you were in the middle of nowhere and you were trying to get Wi-Fi you're basically putting an antenna in your pocket that way you don't lose the Wi-Fi signal you don't lose the spiritual Wi-Fi <laughs> you know it's kind of a strange uh, metaphor but you know it really is true Basically, it acts as an antenna, a, a conduit to the signal that the, de uh, the deity that we are <clears throat> using is giving off. I keep pointing over there because uh, her statue is right over there. <clears throat> in fact, I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to zoom in real quick. That's my spiritual shelf here. Yep, and she's got a little geode right here. She's holding that for me. I usually put my car keys there too. <clears throat> so uh, she blesses my car keys. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is her. She's It's a pretty big statue and I got seashells right below her feet. Uh, and those seashells I surprisingly got from Torch Lake. Some It's uh, like an hour away from here. Um, it is, uh, I, I found those in a lake so I thought that was good for her. So yeah, I... She has been with me for a long time, and I'm very grateful for her. So if you see me point over there, that's basically what I'm doing. I know it's unprofessional to move the camera while I'm talking, but sorry. But anyway, <clears throat> yeah, it's like a form of communication. And if we keep it with us, we don't lose that communication. It stays with us. And the more energy we give it, the stronger the signal gets. I have been praying with this for years and I can already feel that it's, I know it's already, it's been in my hand, but if you sense the energy, whether it has just been hanging out on the shelf or it's been in your hand, you can feel like a heat radiate off of it. Almost like you, if you popped it in the microwave or something, you could feel the heat off it. I wouldn't do that, but you know. You feel this energy and it's really, really warm. And no matter how cold it is outside, I tried this. And it's outside right now. The wind chill is so bad. If you're not wearing gloves, your fingers will get numb within minutes. I decided to take a little example. So basically, I let it cool down for a bit. I held it like this. 
and I felt it. You know, I tried to sense the energy. I was getting heat off this thing. And it was so freaking cold out. If that says anything. Uh, I do intend to make more um, prayer beads eventually. Not just to sell, but to use, you know, but um, I really haven't had the chance. Like for the goddess Isis, for example, I have an Ankh, which I have used in my, uh, in the episode, using religious objects for protection. I use that for her instead of prayer beads. So it's basically like I use different symbols to contact them. Now, I don't wear the Ankh, you know, when I have her. That stays here and, you know, it hangs above my room for protection. But I always, um, I sleep with my robe, my bathrobe, and I put this in my bathrobe pocket. Now, um, I feel like it protects me from bad dreams, and it really does. It really makes me feel protected, and I haven't had a, a bad dream for a very long time. Although one time, I forgot to put it in my pocket, and that night I had a, such a bad dream that I woke up with, with sweat, and I, I had nothing but fear up and down my body. It was that bad. And I'm like, oh my god, I forgot to put the things in my pocket. So uh, that night, I didn't just put it in my pocket. I put it under my pillow. And I slept with those under my pillow. And I was fine the rest of the night. It's similar to the energy given off by a, a dream catcher. It really does help prevent negative energy uh, from coming to you but it really depends on what what the deity is and what energy you put into it she is a goddess of earth one time I tried to see if she could help me with my finances and all and in one of uh, my meditations my astral meditations she called to me and I found myself in the middle of this really deep forest there was so much green it was so beautiful this forest was so lush and there was a beautiful stream of water the here I could hear the water just going down gently it was so calm she was wearing exactly what she was wearing in that statue she was a beautiful woman very beautiful she had beautiful long hair it was red she was a redhead and she had almost like a scandally kind of kind of clothing on. She had very little clothing, although she had like a a cloak, just a light cloak around her. And uh, she said, Colton, I I love the rituals that you do for me. I love coming to them. You're doing very good with that. You know, and I, you always make me feel very comfortable, but unfortunately I can't do anything about your finances. I'm not that kind of goddess. Sorry, so sorry. I cannot do this just to let you know, but feel free to call upon me for protection, you know, for you and your loved ones. Uh, or, you know, if something's going wrong in your life, you know, you can call upon me to fix it. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. You know, I just thought I would, you know, try because you're, you're a, a mother goddess and you have so much more power and she's like yeah yeah I know I know but you know I don't work that way so I'm, I just want to let you know that and I'm like okay and then um, all of a sudden I woke up and I wrote everything down that she said just to make sure so that was that was on me that was my bad that was um, and it was good that she let me know or else I would keep making the same mistake again and I, I don't when you're dealing with deities, you know, you kind of want to be professional, almost like if you were going to a, like a job interview or, you know, you have a job already. You want to be as professional as you can be around them, you know, because they're like the big bosses. Now, some will judge you more. Some will not judge you. Most good ones won't. Uh, luckily, she's very easygoing, very friendly, and um, she she's a mother figure. She is supposed to not only be the goddess of Earth, but also of all Celtic people and the Tuatha Dé Danann, which, if you guys don't know what that is, they were supposedly a group of very powerful fairy folk. They were much more powerful than uh, trolls and leprechauns and fairies, you know, that you hear about in fairy tales. They were supposed to be, like, godlike. 
and upon their death, they actually became gods. Brigid is actually one of them, a Celtic deity. Um, so <clears throat> she uh, she is very powerful, but you know what? That was that was my mistake, and at least she let me know in a nice way, and now I know, you know, what not to do. And if you go to a deity, sometimes they'll call to you in in the astral. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes you can go to them, you know, you know, just say, hey, knock, knock. But uh, this helps. I had this in my pocket as I was doing the meditation. So it created a stronger connection for me to get to her. Sometimes if you don't have the right vibration, sometimes it'll be hard to get to these certain divine powers. But that's why it's always good to have maybe like a crystal or, you know, something that has been properly energized on you while you do that. All right, so that is how you make um, prayer beads and how you use them. Uh, it's not rocket science, you know. You can get as creative as you want. You can do it as complex or as simple as you want. Uh, I do know that there are different kinds of prayer beads. There are those like I, I showed you which are for conducting energy and then there are Buddhist prayer beads I know of which uh, for each bead, each bead counts as an hour of meditation and basically what they would do is every hour that they meditated they would pull the bead up on the rope and they'd hold it so it don't slide back down. They'd meditate again and then that would be the next hour they'd do that and they would meditate for super long periods of time. I don't know if there's anybody out there besides, you know, Buddhist monks and, you know, Tibetan monks who actually do that, who do hardcore meditation, yogis and whatever, yoga. There are 36 beads on this. I would have to meditate for 36 hours a day. As spiritual of a person as I am, and I do love meditation, and you know it's very good for you and I know I, I preach that I know but I'm not that gung-ho about meditation I I do feel like I have other things to do you know besides meditate all day you know I kind of wish you know I could try it once you know just spend a whole day meditating but I don't know if I could do it uh, but if you want to make those kind of prayer beads then go to town I ain't gonna do it but uh, anyway that's uh, pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to this channel, and if you want to see more content like this, hit the bell button so that you don't miss any videos that I post in the future. And uh, give a like to this video, and share this on as many social media platforms uh, as you can, guys. I really want to get this information out there to help people. I know there's a lot of people struggling with, you know, um, trying to participate in spiritual activities, trying to learn and grow on their spiritual path. And I know how difficult that can be. I was, I had to teach myself mostly. So I know how hard it is. So I want to get this information to all who I possibly can and, you know, really help my following grow. Right now I have 8 subscribers as of this video, so hopefully we can get more guys, so please, for me, thank you, and please have a blessed spiritual path.